everybody, this is my friend Katie Golden. Uh, she is not just a hilarious person, you're also a podcaster That's about right. science. Do you want to intro yourself real quick? Yeah, I do a science podcast called Creature Feature. It's about how animals and people, we're, we're not so different, are we? Well, I don't know. I guess that's what we're here to find out. Yeah. Uh, you go find the chair. Tight. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? No, because you have more. I know I can. This is a science show, not a math show. Alright, cool. <laughs> So, Katie has something for us. I do. It's a slideshow, guys. <laughs> well, point it at that. We're at. All right. So, I'm going to talk about some different ways that animals will respond to human civilization, uh, like this possum. So, uh, animals are—they all have different strategies for coping with human society. Um, so. Uh, I have a question for you guys. You can answer, don't be scared, by their sort of warning. Um, so what do you think are uh, some of the different ways that animals respond to human cities? Yeah. That's, that's, that is one. That's a good one. Anything else? Run yeah. away. That is another one. I feel like you're cheating. Right? <laughs> um, Dress up. Die and get run over? Those Dress up as a human? <laughs> um, I mean, there was the possum in a hoodie, so kind of, yes. So, um, so, so <laughs> do like this Australian brush tailed possum um, uh, get into a box? I love this picture because you can see it's like it tells such a story. They like shoot a hole in, and then like they opened it, and he's just like, oh. <laughs> I can't move, but I've lived a good life. <laughs> Um, and here's a, a video that went viral just a little while ago. There's snow monkeys in Japan, uh, and... Can, wait, can you guys see what's happening right now? There are monkeys climbing on telephone wires. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is what is in the video. Can you guys uh, guess why they might be doing this? That's right, that's right. It's pretty straightforward. Sometimes a monkey is a cigar. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, there are three, basically three categories in which animals respond to cities. So there's the adapters, as one of you mentioned, the exploiters, sort of like that brush-tailed possum who was filled with jelly donuts, and then there's avoiders who don't want anything to do with us. Um, so adapters and exploiters are able to change their behavior and sometimes even their physiology to acclimate to human cities, um, and avoiders cannot do this for a variety of reasons. They're unable to adapt, so they flee, um, and we'll really only see them near cities when they're attempting to migrate or disperse. Uh, all right, so here's a Los Angeles native, uh, an avoider, the mountain lion. Has anyone ever seen a mountain lion in person? A couple of people. Where did you guys see the mountain lions? In the zoo. Oh, oh, okay, okay. All right. Um, That's kind of a cheat. <laughs> okay, yes, you raised your hand. Me. I saw it mouth. Have you seen oh, okay. one up close? Not at the zoo? Where have you seen it? I was in Texas and I was in the woods camping and uh, a buddy of mine were out in the woods and a couple eyes kind of crept up to the darkness and I remember my friend who was an Eagle Scout uh, grabbing the new animal side. Deer 
uh, in Griffith Park because uh, one of the things they do is they go for our cultivated lawns, so like in cemeteries, golf courses, basically the only green areas in Los Angeles. Is um, it is he just have a restricted range because he's like depressed? No, he's trapped by three balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not, <laughs> yeah, he can't, he's well, not going to play Frogger. To be fair, program. Russell is a psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got to see the psychological explanation of everything. Well, if you want to hear something depressing, so uh, oh, deer, yeah. deer, deer will go to these cemeteries and eat the flowers that are left uh, on the graves. And uh, P22 likes to sneak up on these deer and eat them. So I imagine you're a mourner and you see someone like eating the flowers on grandpa's grave and you're like, wow, well, maybe it's grandpa come back to the Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Guts everywhere. Grandpa died twice. So we're helping. <laughs> we're helping. Well, they would have been better off if we had never built Los Angeles. Um, but yeah, it is interesting because sometimes, paradoxically, like they do survive because of human structures like a lawn, that, like a big golf course that you'll find like these ruminants on and then he gets to eat the animals that are eating the grass, but again, you would have been better off if we weren't here at all. So, oh, and one other thing to mention is uh, even though he's doing pretty well, sometimes they, they, he's still in some trouble because he can be found uh, with rodenticide in his blood because the rodenticide is eaten by rodents, which then he eats, and then he gets that in his bloodstream, and it compromises uh, mountain lion's immune system, and so uh, he can get mange really easily, so they have to capture him, cure his mange, and let him back into the cemeteries to eat more grandpas. Um, so there's a distinction between adapters and exploiters. Adapters can just basically get by. Like, they, they can work it, but exploiters thrive in cities. They actually have a competitive advantage due to uh, human-made I feel like there's such a truth about Los Angeles and surviving in LA, because <laughs> some people, they can just adapt, but like, you see that dude in that, you know, he's got that like bright red car, and like, that's an exploiter. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, I don't know how this got here. Um, so, uh, here's an adapter, the Bobcat. Anybody seen a Bobcat? Yeah. Uh, I actually have. And, uh, and making weird eyes at our house cat. Um, but yeah, they live on the periphery of urban areas. They are smaller. There's less conflict with humans than versus like a mountain lion. Because if you see a bobcat, you're going to be like, oh, cute. But if you see a mountain lion, you're like, kill it. Well, <laughs> maybe not. Like, probably not. But uh, so it feeds on the rodents and small mammals that are actually urban exploiters. Because like rats, they're great. They are super good at adapting to cities, and so bobcats will eat the rat populations. Um, but they do still face some threats, so there's this thing that happens when you have freeways and highways where, again, they don't want to cross the road and become blobcats, so uh, they're going to have these genetically isolated populations, and that reduces genetic diversity, and that's, you know, not so great. Um, and here's an urban explorer that I'm sure everyone has seen. Uh, it's the gull. And they're very <laughs> opportunistic feeders. They will eat fish, human garbage, cat food, insects, small rodents, eggs, Doritos. They'll shoplift. Uh, look at them, flip and go. And cheese it, cheese it, cheese it. <laughs>
in that way at some point. <laughs> I mean, so like, you can't reasonably say you've never just been like, do I want everything in this trail mix? Oh, fuck it. <laughs> and they got in a rapper or something. Okay, I mean, that's, 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 that's the minimums for me. Like, I just got a Girl Scout come to my door, and she's like, you want to buy some Girl Scout cookies? And it's like, I do. <laughs> it's just like taking that entire sleeve and plastic. Diving into it like a ball of tiki masala. Yeah. Um, so why do goals do so well? Um, one way to look at it is they're greedy assholes. They are aggressive. They display mobbing behavior, as seen in the documentary. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, they are very opportunistic. They are omnivores who will eat basically anything they can fit in their mouths. Um, they're inquisitive, so they will boldly investigate things. If you've ever noticed, like you're on the beach and you've got your chips, they'll walk right up to you and start staring at you until you feel intimidated and you're giving them everything in your wallet. Um, so here's some differences between an exploiter and an avoider. So our avoider, the mountain lion, uh, is a large carnivore. The goals are small omnivores. Uh, the mountain lions have specific territory requirements. They need a large range, um, and whereas the goals are migratory and highly mobile. Uh, the mountain lions are considered a deadly threat to humans, so we won't tolerate them being in our neighborhoods, whereas goals are a mere menace, or so we think. Um, <laughs> the mountain lions are solitary hunters. They avoid calm specifics. They're not really engaged socially, whereas uh, seagulls will work together to bully everyone else. Um, and they actually have a pretty intricate social structure. Um, and mountain lions cannot fly, whereas gulls can fly real good. Uh, so uh, I just think I feel like I'm giving gulls kind of a bad rap here. I want to give you sort of a more tender side. Uh, they are highly socially intelligent. They will actually pay attention to each other's behavior. And so if you have a bull who's like a real, like, prize wolf all the time, they'll ignore him. He's like, guys, guys, it's like, it's a, it's a human. And he's like, ah, oh, shut up. Uh, whereas, like, if it's someone who's, like, really reliable, they'll listen more when they give alarm calls. They also do this really sweet thing. So when they're nesting, they're very particular about where they lay their eggs because that's important. They don't want them all that hard work to just be someone else's lunch. So uh, couples will sort of chatter to each other and utter these soft calls that are indicating like, I think we should do it a little to the left, and then like the white bird is like, no, 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 like over there, and then the husband bird is like, okay. Um, uh, actually, do we want to Yeah, why don't we say this for okay. the, uh, for, there will be, I'm looking for a word, help me out, buddy. <laughs> At the end. Wow, that panel. Okay. A panel? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, for, for a chance to talk about it a little bit more. So if you guys have questions, hold on to them until the end. But next, oh, we're going to show. Oh, we're going to Yeah, yeah. Okay. Tight. All right, everybody, uh, can we get a first round of applause for you?